This is Pride of Africa, coming from Aulo TV. Indidi Obioha is the Chief Executive Officer, CEO, Enthines Limited, an event management and consulting outfit, Enthines Vitals and Enthines Lifestyle and Fashion Clinic. She was born February 15th, the day after Love's Day, in Germany, an indigent of Emo State, and has a Bachelor of Science degree in International Relations from the University of Ife. She had a sting to professionalism in marketing, advertising, telecommunications and banking. Okay, went to secondary school, Federal Government Girls College away. Um, went to Bafemi Awolowo University where I studied international relations, which has totally nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's usually what um, the gifts, the God-given gift in you that I believe is the best form of money-making device as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, having left university, did my youth service, um, my first taste of um, employment was with the telecom industry. It was a VAC job. No, it was advertising actually. I was lucky to get this job with an advertising agency. I remember it was called New Generation Advertising Agency. And I think I must have made a huge impression on the owners that they did say to me then that did look, whenever you're on holiday, this table is here for you. It has your name on it. So that was that was that was for me that was that was an amazing experience for me because as a very young adult, being having somebody believe in you, people believe in you and what you're able to deliver on was just phenomenal for me. So that definitely urged me and you know, gave me the courage to believe in whatever it is I want to do. When I did finish school, then I worked with Savannah Bank at the time and then moved on to Fountain Trust Bank. And Fountain Trust Bank was the last of it for the paid employment um, experience for me. After Fountain Trust, I knew I wanted to do more. I wanted something more challenging and I was ready to run my own thing. And I asked myself, at that time, I had always said to myself that when I decide to do my own thing, it would have to be something that I'm passionate about. She is also a renowned fashion icon and stylist who has been awarded the most stylish woman of the year four times. Her love for fashion and looking the part endeared her to set up the Enthize Lifestyle and Fashion Clinic, a one-stop center for all your style needs. And back then when I was in the bank, I know I'm, I've always been very cautious of my looks, kind of, especially my hair. So I would take, I would go to the salon like literally every weekend to get my hair done. I remember my colleagues back then were so convinced that I did have a salon in my house because I would always come up with a new hairdo every week. And most people didn't have that time, but I had time for my hair. And I was married, but I did have time for my hair. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would have my, so when I wanted to open a salon, when I wanted to leave the banking industry, I said to myself, hmm, what did I see that was lacking? What gap can I fill? And I remember um back then when i would go do my hair i'd have traveled all the way to the island or to Kedja. then i was living in yaba then and i had to go to this place where i felt they had more convenient um environment to get one's hair done mainland had a lot of fantastic stylists but the atmosphere wasn't conducive for one it wasn't very comfortable so i said to myself i would open a very convenient and comfortable salon and that was how I developed haircraft and haircraft I mean you'd come into haircraft it was an experience for you you'd get your hair done you served tea or water you know there's just that extra care that you know that would give to you to make you very comfortable and all that so that went on I remember when we opened haircraft two or three months right after we opened it we got the deal to become the official hair salon for the Mozuzu Girl Nigeria pageant and that was a big break for us. That totally put us bang in the limelight. And then Haircraft was, became almost a household name, practically a household name, in less than three months of it being open. So that was very successful for me. I'm not a stylist, but I've always been blessed um, as a very creative person. So I would come up with concepts on how the, the um, people should look in terms of the kind of hairdo that will go with what they're wearing and stuff like that. So it was me being more a hair consultant than um, a stylist, hair stylist itself. And that went on well. And while we were doing that, we also would, were the official um, salon for 
the wedding planner magazine for her models that would showcase wedding dresses because i remember i did see then that um i'd seen a couple of the, a few of the magazines and i thought that there was something missing i didn't think the girls that were modeling the wedding dresses looked totally together because it's a total package it's the wedding dress is the wedding hairdo the accessories and all of that to bring you out the way you should look as a bride her love for creativity and putting things in order got the best of her when the enthys event management arm of the group started business in 2007. that was pretty that was pretty me um what i would wear to events people would say to me did i like this oh where can i get it can you get it for me and I realized, okay, there's a gap somewhere. People are looking for what to wear to events. Nicely filling that gap. And that's what I did. And I opened up the fashion clinic, clothing and styling today's amazing women with fantastic clothes that make them the belle of the ball at every event that they attend. And the fashion clinic then gave it to the bridal business. Because I realized that when I do the weddings, you know, we never get to see what the brides would wear until that day. And I had a problem with the way some of my brides would look because I believe there are occasions, whatever occasion you're attending, make the statements you can make and all that. So either the, text, the, 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 the style of the outfit won't do justice to their body profile or the head, there was just something that wasn't right for some of my brides. But to correct somebody, you have to have options for them to fall back on. So I set up the bridal, one-stop bridal store where the brides can come in and get everything they want for their, for their um, wedding day in terms of looks. And at the same time, we're planning, we'll plan your wedding. So it was like, I, I always believe in a one-stop shop where you can come in and just get, so you come in, buy your wedding dress, buy your wedding accessories, get your, wedding, your bridal hair done, and then we will plan your wedding. So what better way to put it out there than that? I mean, we've just moved to a new office and... Um, in Lekki and um, I like the feedback. I think um, we actually took our time to put this together in terms of the structure and all of that. So the appreciation, the way people appreciate what we've put together has encouraged me to put up more of this in other locations. Hopefully would we'll come up with something in Abuja, one more in Lagos, something in Ghana and then we'll see how it takes us. And Vines Limited has carved a niche in the event industry as a foremost event planning company, which has over the years planned and coordinated various major events for clients within and outside Nigeria and across different industries, from social, political to corporate events. I remember a bride that came on, she was telling me how frustrated she's been planning her wedding. And I was just just saying how I planned my own wedding, got to my wedding on a boat, da da da, everything about. And you know, I think she saw all the excitement in me. She she liked the ideas I was giving, and she just threw at me and said to me, "Madam, you know what? Plan my wedding for me." And I thought it was a joke. Now this is also the fact that I've always I like to host. I've always like to throw parties. I mean, back then at home, I would always, for any reason, my husband would say to me that like, any reason to throw a party, I would throw. When she threw it at me and said she wanted me to plan her wedding, like, hmm, okay, not a problem. And we started. So we planned that wedding and it was a huge success and that, um, that got us our first three, our next three weddings that we planned and that's totally how the wedding planning part of our event business started. And then, um, from there, I remember we now decided to develop our own concept of an event to do was about this period. And they were, you know, the whole Valentine thing and all that. And a friend of mine said to me, Didi, why don't we do something different for Vows Day? And she was talking about, okay, our families are, you know, a couple of things. I'm like, eh, okay, that's true. But let's, let's do it as an event. She was like, oh, really? I said, yes. And she was, I said, but I don't want to do anything on land. Because I remember then when I was in the bank, to go from point A to point B on Vows Day was like a no-no. The traffic in Lagos was always insane on Vows Day. So I said, let's do something different. Let's do something on water. She was like, did you come again? You've come again with your crazy ideas. I'm like, no, let's find a boat. Let's do like a cruise, a Kauri cruise where people can wine and dine on the boat and da 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 serenade them with beautiful music. She was like, oh, where are we going to find that kind of boat? And I'm like, okay. 
nothing is impossible let's start and i started looking and i did find the c card booth and that's how we came up with that event we lost money though because it was the first trial which is a what i always say to myself it's the seed you sow to be like an investment you make in yourself to be able to create that um create your brand or create that opening for yourself Enthized events, conceptualizes, organizes, defines, packages, plans, manages, and coordinates events, the likes of which are second to none in the industry. Her attention to detail, creativity, conceptualization skills, and professionalism has accorded them the Event Management Company of the Year six times and one of the first five event management company to be reckoned with in Nigeria. Um. You see, the truth is, when you enjoy what you do, you don't, nothing seems to cumbersome for you at all because there's joy in what you, you derive joy. It's fun for you doing, I mean, I have a friend who owns a jetty and is into boat repair and all that, and he loves to ride his, the boats, and so he's making so much money from fixing people's boats. Taking their boats on a ride to make sure that they're okay, but he's making a lot of money. But it's so you see him and he always looks young. So I say to people, it is very important that whatever you decide to do in life, let it be something that you derive pleasure from doing. Don't do it out of the fact that you're hoping to make it the money that's driving you force. Because then the likelihood of that business standing the test of time is very slim. But when it's passion driven, it's from you're doing something that you enjoy. I say the best kind of money to make is money that's made from what you enjoy doing. You can't go wrong. So that totally keeps me going and the fact that I have an amazing support system. My kids, my husband. So I don't see anything. I do events and I party at my event. She's happily married and blessed with three lovely children. Yeah, people tell, I mean, I hear people say, oh, indeed, you're very lucky. Um, your husband is so supportive. I'm like, no, it's not luck. I think it's, that's also, what happens when you marry a friend somebody that you both that understands what you're about and is willing to go on that you're both willing to go on that ride all through you know as i always say uh, growing up as human beings first and foremost you would have marked out what you want to be in life what your dreams are what your aspirations are and i say no human being has a right to stop you from achieving that but yourself and your god when women, when I see women that I know have the tendency to be bigger than where they are and it's because of the men behind them, because of the, the men are afraid of the success that they will make of themselves and they hold back. I, I, I think it's a pity and I think certain men sometimes should probably go for counselling and all that because, yeah, I mean, because I say to men, once your wife is unhappy, your home can never be happy. But if you have a happy woman that enjoys what she's doing and is at peace with herself, trust me, you're not coming back to a house but a home. So believe in yourselves, don't let anyone hold you back, dream it, and leave the rest to God. My name is Ndidi Obioha, and this event limited, and this place, and this fashion clinic, and this bridal, that's what I do. And I love Aula TV. Keep watching. Thank you.